Joshua and Jericho. Remember the promises God made to Abraham. You kids will become a great nation. They will have their own land, and from your family will come a blessing for the whole world. It had been nearly 500 years since God made those promises. Only the first one had come true. Sort of. Abraham's family had grown to be a nation, the Israelites, but they still didn't have their own land, and the blessing for the whole world was still unclear. The Israelites had disobeyed God time and time again, so God put them in time out until they were ready to obey him. Now Israel's long time out was finally over, and it was time to enter the promised land once again. Moses, their leader, gave a long speech, reminding the Israelite kids who were now grown-ups of everything God had done for them and all the laws he had given them. Everyone said, yes, we're going to trust God for sure this time. And then Moses walked up on top of a mountain and died. Yep, he died. He got to see the promised land from the top of the mountain, but because he had disobeyed God too, he never got to go in. Instead, God chose Joshua to be Israel's new leader. Joshua was a man who trusted God. So Joshua led all the Israelites across the Jordan River and into Canaan, the promised land. Of course, they weren't alone in Canaan. Just as soon as they crossed the river, they ran into a city, a pretty big one. It was called Jericho, and it had big, strong walls and big, strong people who did not want the Israelites to move into Canaan. Joshua knew God was giving them this land, but the people of Jericho didn't care about Israel's God. They were ready to fight the Israelites to stop them from going any further. The people of Jericho were going to stay in Canaan, and as long as they were safe behind those big strong walls, there was nothing the Israelites could do about it. Then gave Joshua some very strange instructions. March around the city one time each day for six days, God said. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times and have your priests blow horns. When the horns blow, have everyone yell, and the walls of the city will fall down. Well, that's weird, Joshua must have thought. March around the city for six days, then blow horns and yell, and these big, strong walls will just fall down. Because we yelled at them? Joshua trusted God, but did did he trust God this much? What if he had Israel follow God's instruction and nothing happened? They'd all be pretty mad at Joshua. They would probably wouldn't want him to be their leader anymore. They might even want to kill him. If the people of Jericho didn't kill him first, what should Joshua do? What would you do? Joshua remembered how God had saved the Israelites, including him from slavery in Egypt. He was there when God fed them in the desert. Plus, God had told Joshua that he was that he had already given Jericho to him. Doubt God? Not Joshua. He had confidence in his big, strong God. Joshua led the Israelites as they marched around Jericho for six days. On the seventh day, he had them blow horns and yells just like God said, and the walls fell down. The Israelites got to enter the promised land, and Joshua added this story. To all the stories of an amazing God who could be trusted no matter what.